Hi, it's me again with Corel Draw Tips and Tricks. And somebody sent me a picture of this poker chip, and they want them to start making poker chips. Uh, pretty easy, pretty uh, simple. Uh, just a couple of things to think about. I've already made two a little bit different styles, more like the other one, and you know, just depending on how far you want to go. So I'm just going to draw an ellipse. I'm holding down the control button. I'm going to hit P. And then I'm going to take a two-point line holding down the control button so it's perpendicular. I'm going to hit P. And then there are six white, basically, and six black. So we need to we need 12. So you normally divide that by 60. But since uh, we've got two lines, basically, you're going to be doing it. Now, if you started your line here and up, you'd have to rotate it. But we're going to control D and rotate it 30 degrees. And what that's doing, it's making both lines at one time. Now, take this second line and control D and make a duplicate. And holding down the shift key, bring it in slightly to whatever you want to do. And then control D again and take that line and bring it in. And you see what I'm doing. I'm making spots for that line. So now what I'm going to do is take the Smart Fill tool, set on black, and I'm going to just going to fill in every other section. Then we can take our lines away, and if you if you will hold down your Alt key and just kind of get those three, and then hit Delete, and then hold down your Alt key and hit those three and get Delete. What the Alt key did was help you select it uh, just by touching it, not encompassing the whole thing. Then take your Smart Fill tool and fill in that. Now, at this point, I would go ahead and figure out what you're going to do on the inside. If you're going to have another line, um, you could take that. There's something hidden right there that I was working on. Anyway, take that line, Control D and make a duplicate, holding down the Shift key and move it inward. And then you could control D again. It puts a perfect circle equally to the other one. Then you could fill that in with uh, the other one in with black. Now, at this time, I would take all of them, select all of them, and right-click. No, don't do that. Just go up and uh, right-click no outline because we don't want those lines. And you could do it. You know, you could. I could have made it that black line go up to that line. So let's do that. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and fill in this line so it kind of looks like that. And then if you wanted another circle in there, just take this. That probably looks better than take that Control D and make a duplicate and move that into whatever you want to do. And then we can, let's zoom in here. That's a pretty thin line. And then make that a black ring. Now what we want to do is select it all and right-click no outline because we don't want any hairlines for there to cut out. Now, sometimes, and I don't know if you can see that on your monitor, there's a little bitty where that hairline was that the field didn't go to. But this time, I am going to set my nudge factor on like 15, and I'm going to nudge that circle out of the way, and I'm going to grab all this and go up to object and combine. Now, what's happened here when that happened, there's something uh, messing it up. I've got two of something somewhere. There we go right there. You see, I've, I've got that one. It uh, doesn't need to be there. I don't know how it got there, but if you ever have that, we can go up to object, break the curve apart. Well, we can just start over with a new ring. Don't worry about it. Now, bring all this back. And then we need to make another ring. Uh, since we work in the center of the page, we can just draw a circle. And look how close I got. That's pretty impressive. But let's go ahead and, and bring it in by holding down the shift key. And then control D and make a duplicate and go outward. All we're going to do now is take that smart fill tool and fill it in. Now the hairline is still there. And hopefully the combined tool will work this time. Uh, somehow I made a a duplicate. Evidently, I've got a little leak. So let's try this now. Let's try this and nudge it over. See that I got two lines there. That's why well, there's another line.
So let's just nudge everything over, make sure we've only got what we want. This isn't as difficult as I'm making it. Now we should be able to combine it. Go to object and combine. And what that did, that got rid of those black lines. Let's hit, you know what, let's find out what was in our way. I'm using somebody else's, let's try this. No, I've got no outline set on that, so I don't really know what's going on with that. Must have a little leak. So there's your poker chip. Now, before we get into where you can find this, there's no lines in here. It's all colors. So if you're going to want to cut that out, and this is why you want to work in the center of the page, we can draw a red hairline and then hit P. And then you can decide on how much wood you want, because all this is going to be engraved. And so it's, uh, you don't want the engraving to go all the way to the wood. I'm going to hold down the shift key. I'm going to leave that much surface. So that way, when you cut it out, you know, you'll have that much wood and this all. Just imagine if you looked at it from a side and you engraved it, uh, this is going to be dented down. And then this way, the wood will make it all solid. Now, where do you find these symbols? I've made several videos on this, but if you'll go to text, glyphs, and in older versions, it might say symbols. Times New Romans has the clubs, the heart, the diamond, and the spade. Now, you can search the whole, all the entire font, and you see it took the symbol away. And then when you do that, you've got the entire font, and you have to go down and look for those symbols. Or you can go right here and go, I want to just look for symbols. And it took this font away. Now I've just got symbols. So this time we're going to take the club. All you have to do is grab it with your left mouse button and drag it over and then enlarge it. And because we work in the center of the page, you can press P. Now, if you got it still selected, you can hold down the shift key and now, things like this just don't center to me very good. So we can, with nothing selected, you can change your nudge factor like 0.1, grab that item and slowly nudge it up. To me, it looks a little more centered that way. And you could do that. You know, what I would do if I was going to make chips and that you were going to go with the face cards, just control D and duplicate that guy. Take that over, take that away and replace it with a spade. You can see I've already used a spade, but now we're going to use, of course, you can draw a heart. And if I was going to do this, I'd probably draw them, bring them all four out at the same time and, and make them the same size. But then just to do the next one, just make that, hit the plus key or control D and delete that. And let's change it into a diamond, which you could actually make anyway but it would probably look more like the, the shape of the diamond. And that's why I draw in the center of the page because just in one second. So there I have four chips made and because we made duplicates, they've all got the same hairline, they've all got the same color and so on and so on. Anyway, I hope that helped a little bit. Thank you for watching.